Hello everyone, uh, good morning or good evening. I am Vincent uh, and I'm really pleased to be with you tonight uh, for this new Substance live stream. I am uh, with a special guest, uh, Jean-François Bozek. Hi Jean-François, how's it going? Hi, hi Vincent. Thank you very much uh, for having me. I'm really good, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you and uh, we are super pleased to be with you and uh, especially because uh, as you will see, Jean-François is a 3D designer um, who works in the product design industry. So we are super happy because it's, uh, we don't have that much artists so far from the, this industry. So it, it will be uh, fresh new for many people. And uh, actually, we are with you for many reasons, um, because we have been doing some collaboration, uh, especially, for example, the, if you have installed the late, latest version of Substance Designer, um, the splash screen is actually done by you. And um, also, we have made uh, a specific, well, you have made a specific pro project with us, uh, which is called the Obsidian Watched, uh, and, um, which is super interesting. We, we have made a, an article about it, uh, which is available on, on the Substance magazine. And uh, we are here uh, to talk about this specifically. So before to, to start, what uh, you can do is uh, sharing your screen and um, uh, this way you are going to, to introduce a bit yourself, what you have done, where you come from, uh, etc. So, okay, we are going to see your, uh, your screen in a few seconds, I, I think. I think this is my... Let's see. Yeah, and meanwhile, it's loading. Uh, I want, just wanted to add uh, that in the chat, uh, we have uh, Marine and Casimir. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, them, um, whether it's about uh, uh, the live stream or something else, they are here uh, to, to help you guys. So the, yeah, the, the, the screen is yours, uh, Jean-Francois. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, hi everyone. My name is Jean-Francois. Um, I'm actually a freelance 3D designer um, focused on industrial design. Um, after my high school classes, I studied applied arts during almost one year. Um, and my dream was to make animation movies. Um, but I was also passionate by uh, music production and uh, I was a consumer electronic enthusiast. Uh, that's how the idea of uh, making CGI for industrial design was born. Um, in this presentation, uh, I will focus on my collaboration with Adobe, but if you want to see more of my work, uh, do not hesitate to go on my website and on my BNs page. Um, so I, I, started, um, I started studying product design at the ISD in Valenciennes in France for two years. Um, during these two years, I uh, studied a uh, basis of design thinking and process. Um, I worked on sketching a lot to, to, to try to, uh, to, to express what I had in mind on the paper, um, working on perspective, uh, concepts. And um, the, the main work was communication with designers. So I worked with them, uh, with other designers, design students uh, during shorts and long projects. So it was really, really interesting. And it was uh, for me a great introduction uh, of, um, to the world of industrial design. But after these two years, uh, as a product design student, I still had a strong passion for 3D. Uh, that's why I decided to go uh, studying digital design for three years. Um, during these three years, I worked on uh, NURBS modeling, visualization, and uh, 3D animation. Um, and um, the main part was NURBS modeling, um, and we used Alias uh, by Autodesk. So uh, we used Alias modeling for product and transportation design, and um, we used it because um, with alias, uh, files are really easy to share and modify. Um, it's also really easy to, to make back and forth uh, between uh, sketching um, and modeling, uh, keeping curvatures and beautiful reflections. 
uh, there is uh, an awesome modeling history uh, that allow you to, to go back in your 3D model when you need it. Um, and uh, it's also for me the best way to communicate with industrial designers because uh, NURBS modeling is used a lot in the industrial design. Um, I also worked a lot uh, on visualization and animation. Um, I did 3D renderings uh, using uh, real-time or pre-calculated softwares like um, V-RED, KeyShot for real-time and uh, mainly V-RED, V-Ray, sorry, and uh, Maya uh, for the pre-calculated. Um, and uh, I also did, at the end of my studies, uh, I did a 3D animation project. Uh, it was a very good way to learn how to manage a project, a project from A to Z, uh, going through storyboard, um, modeling, environment, texturing, uh, to post-production and sound design. So I learned a lot uh, during these three years at school. Um, and I also had the opportunity to make internships, uh, one in Switzerland uh, in the eye and watch industry and another one uh, in the US in a global design company. And, and I remember that at the end of school, people from Algorithmic came at school um, to present us uh, their tools but I didn't really use it at this moment because I had my own workflow and I didn't have time to change it. Um, but when I left school, I worked for almost one year uh, as a CGI artist for the automotive industry at Small Dots in Paris. And then I decided to be uh, self-employed. And uh, I think it was at this moment that I really started using uh, substance tools. The first one was uh, Substance Bitmap to Materials. Uh, it was a revolution for me. And then uh, I wanted to make a shoe project. And so I discovered that I could just uh, paint on objects using, using Substance Painter. And so um, in 2018, um, it was the very first project I made using Substance Painter. Um, so, and, so this one yeah. is your first project, right? Yes, the it was the first one using uh, Substance Painter yeah. for texturing. And um, I really loved it. And uh, that's how I uh, learned uh, the basis of uh, Substance Texturing. OK, that's nice. I, I actually have a, I want to make a small parenthesis because you, you talked about your school in Valenci Valenciennes. So French people may know Valenciennes, of course, uh, but it's a really small country, less than 45,000 people but it's uh, really strong in the uh, in the 3d 3d universities so maybe you can tell us a, a bit more about these universities there yes it's uh, named uh, rubica so um it's uh, like a complex a building with three schools in it uh, there is the isd uh, which is uh, for uh, industrial design and digital design and there is Superinfocom and Superinfo Game, uh, which are schools uh, focused on video games and uh, 3D animation and animation movies. So it was great because um, you have like uh, uh, many people from uh, many different places that come in the same school to learn uh, 3D, but in different ways. And so you can share your patience and share your knowledge. And yes, that's yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, they they really nailed it because this is a project that started maybe I don't know twenty years ago or I don't know exactly, but yeah, yeah, for the the size of the city having such high quality schools, it's uh, it's quite incredible. Okay, so for a first project, it's kind of awesome. I think many people uh, will be jealous, <laughs> especially for a first substance painter project. So I'll let you thank continue. you. Thank you. I, I already did a short animation, which is available on, on my website about this uh, of these shoes. Um, so in uh, 2020, I um, I worked on a on a mouse concept. So it was a personal project, um, and Adobe contacted me and uh, told me if I asked me if I was uh, okay to. Uh, to work with them to rebrand the concept and then to make the substance designer splash screen. 
And so I said, yes, of course. <laughs> and so we, we did it together and it was a really fun experience to have the opportunity to make uh, the new uh, Substance Designer splash screen. So it was the first collaboration I did with Adobe. And then in uh, 2021, I had the chance to, uh, to make the Obsidian Watch project and uh, also to make the Obsidian Watch article for Substance Magazine. Um, and so th this project is uh, it's not a product design con pro uh, concept. It's more uh, like a 3D exploration around product design. Um, and it, it was really uh, nice to, to have this opportunity because it's a project that goes from sketching to final video and sound design. So it's a, a full project that I made with, uh, with uh, the Substance team. So I had uh, a chance, the chance to do that, and it was awesome. Yeah, um, I, I, actually, just before to go, uh, that was interesting, the Substance Designer uh, splash screen for us as well, because uh, one of the main feature was uh, the, the Pantone Spot Colors, which means the integration of uh, the Pantone technology directly with its Substance Designer, which were which was meant to for uh, product designer and industrial industrial designer. So this kind of mouse, that's what uh, one of our, our colleague uh, Pierre Maheu just spotted uh, your art and he said, "Oh, that that would be perfect to showcase because the mouse is like kind of iconic in product design." Uh, so um, that's why uh, we did it. Um, yes, and uh, yes, and it was it was awesome because uh, uh, I, I had the opportunity to to work with many different people for the Simpsons team, and to learn so much. So, thank you so much for this. Um, um, yes, know the uh, Obsidian watch. So, yeah, uh, is let, it the let, time to see the video? Or? I think yes, it's uh, it is good for you. Okay, so we're going to watch the video, which is also available on, on, on our YouTube channel. But let's watch it again. Nice. So yeah, th that was awesome. Once again, uh, could you just quickly, the, it's, uh, it's rendered in uh, V-Ray, right? Yes, in uh, V-Ray and Maya. Okay, cool. So right now what we are going to see, if I'm not wrong, first you are going to detail the first stages of, of, uh, of uh, what, what we asked you to do is to show how would you do. Actually, the mandate was, okay, if you have to design a watch, how would you do from scratch? So that's yes. what we are going to explain here and that you have explained in detail in the article. So I let you uh, show all, all of this. Thank you. Um, so I, uh, the first step was to uh, start using Post-it because uh, to be honest, I didn't know where to go. Um, but uh, the only thing I knew was uh, that I wanted to highlight a substance in the industrial design field. Um, so this post-it phase uh, helped me to, to find the message I wanted to transmit. 
uh, which want to focus on the relationship uh, between humans and technology. Um, and so uh, it's also helped me to find a brief which was to demonstrate a substance painter's power uh, through an intuitive product. Um, and I, I really think that uh, textures and emotions are linked. And uh, I also think that they are the principal link between substance painter and, its, and the artist. Um, so I, I was also highly inspired by um, raw materials and nonlinear shapes. Um, and after a lot of uh, back and forth between uh, sketch modeling and alias uh, and real sketching, um, I, I finally found the, the final shape. So I, I did a lot of back and forth because it permits uh, it. For me, it's, it's really good to validate or eliminate um, ideas very quickly while keeping beautiful curvatures and reflections. Um, and it's a really good tool to, uh, to communicate with designers uh, deforming surfaces and uh, just uh, trying to do what the designer uh, just drew or modify it uh, in front of him and uh, trying to show him different possibilities. Then uh, when I had the final 3D model, um, I uh, did a more accurate one, working on surfaces, refining surfaces. Um, and I modeled all the band, the band, the 3D uh, band model was uh, done in polygons um, because it's a soft uh, object. So I use polygons because I don't have any curvature constraints. Um, and also because I'm uh, allowed to, uh, to deform it easily. Uh, like here, uh, I used a non-linear uh, band deformer uh, directly in Maya. And um, you can I, see the results on the right. Yeah, which uh, the result is quite impressive, honestly. And for the people online, because we have a lot of people who are watching and who comes more from um, entertainment uh, industries and they are not used to, to NURBS, uh, NURBS yes. uh, modeling. So w what, what's the difference uh, between NURBS modeling and uh, static mesh uh, uh, modeling, polygon modeling? Um, it's not the same way of, uh, of modeling. Uh, to, uh, it's not for the same thing, I think. Uh, I will talk about it um, later, just okay. here. I, I will explain um, uh, this. When you have uh, a 3D, this, when you arrive at the 3D preparation, you can see that it's not the same thing because uh, NURBS is really adapted for, it's not really adapted for UV and rendering. Uh, it's not the same process than polygons. Um, when you have your 3D model uh, and you want to, to use it um, to, uh, to, to the 3D rendering, you have to uh, orient surfaces, but you cannot do it in Maya because it will uh, break the mesh. So you have to stay in your software to do that. Um, you can reverse it when needed. And uh, then you st I stitch the surfaces to shells. Um, and then I just did a classic uh, function that is nubs to, to mesh. Uh, just to, to convert the nubs to mesh. And then I did a FBX export. Um, but I had many UVs problems in Maya. I had like uh, no manifold errors. Uh, when I tried to unwrap the mesh directly in Maya, it, it was just breaking everything. And so I had to find a, a solution. Um, and um, I used Autodesk V-RED as a bridge, which was, I think, which was a good idea because uh, Autodesk V-RED is um, a 3D software that is really good for cutting and unfolding UVs on NURBS generated geometry. And I, I used NURBS uh, geometry because uh, for me, for the result I wanted, I needed really beautiful reflections on the objects. And uh, that's why I don't use it when I worked, uh, for example, for a 3D band model, because the band uh, on, on a 3D band, I don't have any uh, curvature and reflections constraints. Uh, 
but on the case, the watch case, I had these constraints. So I wanted, uh, I wanted it to, to be really clean and really smooth. Yeah, no, actually, nurse modeling is like a mat mathematical recipe, actually. Yes. What you yeah. manipulate is math. It's like comparing uh, Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, yes. Uh, everything uh, is mathematical yeah. in il Illustrator, yes. so you, it's always super clean, what, the result that you have, but you have some less flexibility sometimes as well. Yes, no? yes and uh, I, I don't know if uh, NURBS is... Uh, Nubs is honestly is not made for um, 3D visualization. It's really complicated, but sometimes uh, it's it's good to use it uh, when you want like beautiful reflections and really accurate 3D models. Um, so when I I uh, did my UVs on VRED, um, I was back on Maya. Um, and I did the UDIMs on Maya. So the UDIMs are the uh, multiple UVs. And for me, uh, UDIMs are uh, the key to get uh, accurate details. Uh, be before, I uh, didn't often, often use it uh, because I had more pixel density, but I had some continuity problems also. And uh, since the last uh, Substance Painter version, uh, that now allows to paint across UDIMs. I think it's a really good idea to, if you if you need uh, really close shots and details. Yeah, that, that's uh, actually. Uh, I hope some substance painter or developer will look at this because, as some of you in the chat may know, we have been developing uh, UDIMs for UV tiles for almost more than three years actually, and it was at first a, a high request from the VFX. Uh, game uh, VFX and, and movies industry um, because they needed it to work precisely, and but we knew that it was useful. But at the same time, we were expecting that it was not just useful for VFX, but it, that it would be useful for other industries. So, example like this one and what we'll see after are, are, are super good for for rest. And I I have two questions uh, in the in the chat so far. Don't hesitate if you have more questions. Uh, the first one um, is, do you use a graphic tablet for Substance Painter? Um, I, I, I got one here, but uh, no, I, I don't yeah, use it. I, I, I see with your side that you were looking. Um, where is it? Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it's over there, okay. Uh, and the second one is, um, uh, it's about the baking. Um, we'll see in details a bit later, but someone is asking if you are doing the baking of the texture uh, within Substance Painter or within Maya. Uh, I'm I'm not doing it in Substance Painter because uh, I, I don't know <laughs> I can't I can't explain why but I don't uh, I don't use it um, I, I I'm using it on on another project right now but it's really uh, it's just for um, for uh, you know when I when I, you want to have like uh, dirt on some parts of uh, a car for example. Uh, in this case, I will use the baking, but uh, for the watch, I didn't, and for the uh, I didn't use uh, for use it for the shoes. Uh, okay, but it and depends. Yeah, it depends of the project. Okay, uh, I have another one uh, about yeah. uh, Maya and nerves. Someone is asking: Does Maya does not support nerves, or is there always problem when you import nerves file into other software like Blender or or Maya? Um, I'm never, I never tried other software because uh, my workflow is just alias to Maya and sometimes you read, uh, but um, I think that yes, Maya support nerves. There is no, uh, there is nerves uh, on Maya, but I never, I never used it. So I, I cannot tell uh, if it works or not. I, I also, I tried to import my, uh, CAD models and uh, NURBS models from Alias to Maya directly. Uh, but I had some problems in the viewport because I couldn't see it uh, properly. So I didn't, uh, to be honest, I didn't try more. I just uh, convert it and, and try to, uh, to convert the mesh before importing it in Maya. Okay, cool. Um, okay, what about... Uh, uh, substance painter demonstrations. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay, let's go. 
Okay, um, here we are. So this is uh, the watch. Um, to start, I just want to uh, to show you that I used um, a specular glossiness workflow, uh, just because uh, it's more comfortable for me to re-import maps in V-Ray. Um, for the texturing, I started with the body of the watch, uh, which is the main part, but as you will see, um, it's also the easier part to texture. Um, and uh, Substance Painter is pretty smooth uh, because uh, NVIDIA uh, gave me, uh, for this project, to support me on this project, um, uh, the all new RTX A6000 uh, card, uh, which is a super full, uh, super powerful uh, card, and uh, so I would thank thank them for that because it helped me a lot, uh, even even to do some uh, GPU rendering. Yeah, that's a nice and fast present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, actually, the funny thing is just when we were. Um, you had a transition when you had to get back to your older GPU, which was a GTX 980. Yes. And we were, uh, it, it's not the same uh, with all the, the units that you have and uh, the resolution, we, we, we can feel the difference. It was a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, as you can see, the, the body is basically uh, composed of meters. Metals, but I, I wanted something really clean to get beautiful reflections uh, in lighting. And that's also why I use uh, nerves, uh, like we said before. Um, and I remember that when I did this part, um, the brush metal part was not as detailed as I wanted. And so I had to rework the UDIMS uh, to get something sharper. Um, on the body, I also added some details like a uh, microphone here, um, a SIM card here, uh, like here, and even a but another button here. Um, and uh, as I said before, it's more, um, I added those details, but it's more 3D concept that a product that will be uh, produced. It's not a real um, product design concept. And, but I, I, I think that Substance Painter can be really useful in the product design process uh, during researches, uh, because you will see that there is uh, plenty of um, features that can be useful uh, for product design. And I have uh, a question about, about yes. the, this part, actually, because uh, as you, you say, you are, you are using metals, uh, almost raw metals. Uh, so the, the, the shape and, and the concept is super important, but the reflections as well. So do you, yes. do you uh, during the, the production phase, do you do a lot of back and forth between uh, the modeling uh, shaping part and the, the reflection within Substance Painter? Um, not not between the modeling and the, the texturing, but uh, I did a lot of uh, back and forth between uh, Maya and Substance uh, because of the lighting. Um, I always make the old texturing before uh, doing lighting uh, because it's in, it's my uh, workflow. And uh, but uh, when when I have my old uh, model fully textured and I start lighting, sometimes I can see that there is not details, not enough details um, on some parts of the watch. And I, I'm like, okay, maybe I should go back to Substance Painter and trying to do something better. And so, yes, I do some back and forth, but not not with the 3D modeling. I mean, the 3D modeling was completely done before uh, going into, into Painter. Okay, thanks. Um, so, for example, um, here we have the crone. Um, there is a really cool, really nice function I found uh, that permit me to uh, enable the displacement and tessellation. And so that you can see um, 
you can see it better. Um, um, like uh, you can, pr uh, yeah, you can see what it was looks like in the final render um, in your height and normal maps. And that's really cool. Um, I remember that uh, in my uh, previous experiences, like in Switzerland, um, for example, uh, watch 3D models were very, very heavy because of um, many, many elements. And so uh, I think that substance could be a really cool, good idea to, uh, to avoid to have like big mesh with many details modeled when you can do it in textures. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Um, so the crown is here. On the crown, uh, this is a basic 3D model. And so uh, the first material was uh, just a classic pure aluminum. And so I added another texture and uh, I used like, I made a mask and I used the polygon fill, which is another cool feature I use a lot that permits when you have a basic mesh that you can just select polygons you want. And so, uh, yes, I use this function a lot. Um, to make the pattern on the side, I used, what's funny is that I use a cement wall X tiles. So it's not, uh, it's like a cement material, but I used it for my crown just because I like the tile and I, I could play with it. I found it on the Substance Source website. And so that's how, uh, that's, that's how I, I did this. Um, on this crown, the challenge was to add details only using normal and displacement. So I tried many things. Um, and finally, for example, for the center, um, I added a simple circle here. It was uh, an alpha circle. I added it in the grayscale, and then I just added a blur. And uh, in the uh, layer, I just added a fill that permit to modify the texture and the color when you want without uh, touching the, and modifying the, the cycle. And um, I always do, it, it's a simple workflow, but it, it's really good to know because it's a non-destructive workflow. And so uh, it permits to maybe to share the file. And when someone wants uh, to modify textures and colors, it's possible to do this without uh, having to modify everything. And uh, in a product design workflow, it's good to know because uh, I know that uh, you can easily share files and doing uh, just uh, and, and telling uh, your workmates, just try another color or just try another pattern and uh, let's see what, how it looks. And that, that's awesome. Could, uh, someone in, in the chat is asking if you could turn on the wireframe for, for a while. It's, uh, I think, yeah, on the right, you go uh, top right, same like uh, the shadow. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, actually, th that's interesting because as you show the geometry as well, uh, putting the details into the texture, uh, you can try way many more combinations that if you would have to model it and remodel it if it doesn't work. So uh, yes. we once talked with uh, an automotive uh, designer um, and he was explaining that passing from regular modeling to sub uh, substance designer in that case to create the pattern, in, um, they were like going, they were in a, before in one afternoon, they could have done like three to four uh, designs. Meanwhile, yes. uh, they were able to do 10, 10 times more, uh, literally they say up to 40 uh, in, a, in a half a day uh, in Substance Designer. So it's way, it's less painful to, to, to do it this way, uh, in putting the details into the texturing. Yes, and it's uh, to to me it's uh, like it's more fun to do. It's uh, just uh, playing with textures. I, I love I love texturing. So uh, for me, it's a uh, it's a really good way just to explore um, texturing mask. How how you could do uh, how you could combine materials to have uh, 
beautiful results. So yes, uh, it's a new it's a new um, workflow for me because I didn't uh, I, I don't use Substance Painter for a while, but uh, it's a new workflow to me. But I I love this, and so I think it's a good idea. Yes, to uh, and and you can also yes gain time. Yeah. Um, and just to finish on the on the crown, uh, I just had it. It's the same workflow. Uh, I just added um, the logo in the middle with uh, like a logo I did on Substance uh, on uh, sorry on Photoshop and just imported it. I added a blur and I just put it a, a metal sunblasted material uh, in the middle. It's uh, really simple to do, and so you can try many different things with many different materials, and to and have uh, an overview of what you can do and how it how it will uh, looks like. And yes, um, so I also worked on. Uh, let's focus a bit on the bottom of the watch. Um, so. This is a detail um, I made. It's a, it's exactly the same uh, the same way of, to do that. Uh, it was uh, very easy to, uh, to 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 put this logo and this text using Photoshop to make the alpha uh, to make the alpha and, uh, in the mask here in the grayscale. Um, I think it's a basic workflow because of a basic object, but you can do uh, things more complicated and it can be uh, efficient to validate ideas very quickly. And uh, you place it in the, in the 2D view, this one? Or? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes, um, I, I, uh, yes, you can, you can just move it like this. And so we, it will automatically move it in the 3D view. So um, that's uh, that's really good when you want to be uh, uh, to place it very uh, carefully and uh, to to, uh, to to put it in the right uh, yes in, in the right place. Cool. The, uh, there was someone who were asking about. Um, um, sorry, oh, I think the question. Oh yeah, no, it, it, they noticed that the the wrist wrap uh, was uh, was quad. Made with quad. Meanwhile, uh, uh, the 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 part uh, with the screen was the triangles. But I guess it's uh, you re uh, you redid the uh, the modeling for for the, the wrist, right? Um, Maybe just an export option. I don't know um, which which one. Yeah, if you show the wireframe, I think yes. the yeah the 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 wrist is made with uh, polygons, um, uh, with quads polygons. Sorry. Meanwhile, the um, uh, the rest of uh, the 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 crown is made uh, with triangles. But it may be an uh, an export option. Uh, yes. Oh, you are talking about the band. Yeah. Yes, the band is was made in uh, using polygons. And uh, the rest of the watch was a nerves, and so you can see the difference of the mesh. Yeah, as a, as a, sometimes we say to people uh, that it's good to triangulate before to export a substance painter, so the software won't try to guess how it has to be triangulated. Uh, oh yes, okay. So that's uh, that's uh, just to say to people in the chat, not to you, for Jean Francois, but in general, <laughs> I, I think it's a it's a good way if you um if you don't plan to re-export or that, that's a, a good way to make sure it's tri triangulated the way you want. Um, so about the let's talk a bit about the band. So um, I will just enable the displacement. Uh, so this is uh, the texturing of the band. At the beginning, um, it was uh, the, the band without any texture. So you can see that uh, I had it 
I did just everything uh, in texturing. And um, I will just talk about the stitches. For the, for the leather, I just used the basic leather material. Um, and I just uh, modified it a bit just to have something uh, I wanted, but uh, it's a really basic material as I, I found on the uh, substance source. And for the stitches, so here I just used a stitch brush. And so as you can see, uh, it, there is just a perfect continuity between uh, UDIMs and uh, between UV sets. And so for me, it's a, it's a really good feature um, because it permits to have, you cannot see the separation between UV sets. And yeah, exactly. so it, it, it's helped me a lot for the band texturing. Um, I, uh, and what is funny is that uh, Adobe gave me this brush to try it because I was looking for a stitch brush to use. And so they gave me this one and they told me just try it and tell us if it fits your needs. So I tried it, I, I used this one and in the new version of, Suspen of Substance Painter, it became the, the official uh, Substance brush. So yeah. yes. Yeah, this was one of the new feature uh, features. Yes, and that was the perfect way to make sure it uh, it was right, it was done the right way. So we use you. <laughs> yes, but there is many uh, many things you can change uh, in the in the parameters. So it's uh, really good because you can do pretty everything with this brush. So yeah, and uh, as you show as well the fact that right now because implementing. UDIMS, we did it like more than six months ago. Right now it was in July. Uh, but of course it was the first version, the first public version. And there was some stuff improvement we had to do like this one. Now you can go in this 2D view. And uh, if you select the right projection mode, you can do th this kind of continuity, which is extremely useful for, for long patterns like, like this one. Yes. <laughs> Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, I also worked a lot on the uh, on the bump. So here, if I just hide uh, this this one, you can see the difference. I would just change the light a little bit. So I I worked a lot on the bump too. And um, I had some troubles uh, when export exporting my uh, normal maps, and that's why I made um, like a folder uh, with normal only because um, when exporting uh, normals and um, height maps, uh, Substance Painter like blend it in the same. Uh, blend eight and, and normal. And so you cannot, uh, when you texture uh, your file in Maya, uh, you cannot, uh, you, you have like, you have eight in normal and normal in eight. So that's why I made this, this uh, folder. So when I export in my texture, I just hide it. And so I have uh, the eight I wanted. And so when I wanted my normal, I just enable this one and I ex export my normal in a, another file. So it permits to have like a really precise uh, normal maps and eight maps because there is some dis displacement in my renders, but not for every details because uh, I cannot, uh, I think my, my computer won't uh, support uh, that I, I make displacement for the all uh, details. And your watch right now with your new gpu it will for sure <laughs> I, I will try i will try it <laughs> yeah I, actually I, talking about performance uh, someone were, was asking if it, if it's uh, you create uh, the texture in 2k or 4k in 4k 4k but uh to to add something on this um you with substance paint, painter as it's uh, non-destructive you can decide to start working in 2k and then yes. just use the 4K at the end. So it's fast when you are working. And then for the highest quality, you can just add 
export time um, it and it won't it it won't just upscale it will re calculate everything so it looks good at 4k so you you have the choice yes and uh, that's uh, that's really nice to know because yes when you have like uh, with my old card uh, i couldn't work in 4k because it, it was just crashing so uh, i always worked in 2k and so i exported my map in 4k and it was easier like that Substance Painter never crash. Uh, never. Yes. never. I'm, I'm sure, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so I I would uh, just uh, go back to the presentation to, uh, show, to show you um, uh, what it looks like. Uh, this is the uh, final uh, pictures of uh, the case and the crown we were just looking at. Um, and as you can see, I uh, I was very uh, I I I worked a lot on reflections and lighting, and that's why I wanted to have like a simple, really simple aluminium texture uh, to be able to have uh, beautiful reflections. Um, so I made a lot of lighting experiments, and it was uh, really fun to do. Um, I. I also worked a lot on the lighting uh, for the band, for the laser band. And as you can see, you can have really, really uh, small details uh, thanks to UDIMS. And I couldn't have these results if I uh, didn't use uh, UDIMS because it's not possible with only one UV set. Um, and I wanted to, do, to make close-up shots and so, yes, it, I think it was the best solution. And as you can see, there is uh, also the, the result of the all new stitches. Yeah, it's, which works pretty well. <laughs> um, um, I, I have a question uh, about, about this, um, um, about the lighting and the fact that the, depending on the artist, the, there are artists that, who prefer, for example, to Take the object, remove, uh, take a neutral uh, material, um, maybe sometime with the, the normal maps and the displacement, yeah. just to see how the light reacts, uh, and then apply the material on it. Um, uh, you, how do you work uh, rega re regarding this? Um, I make textures before uh, lighting because um, I think that, that a light, the light depends on the textures. Uh, when I was uh, working uh, at Small Dots in Paris, I learned a lot uh, about um, lighting, car lighting. I was working with many talented people that um, learned, uh, and I learned so many things about uh, reflections, a specular um, refraction, and everything like every, everything like that. And and so it was. Um, I I learned how. The light reacts on materials, and so I I think it's very very important. And so when you if you make a lighting on a 3D object and then you work on the material after, uh, so the light won't be the same at all when you, and it would it it, it won't be uh, the same if your uh, if your metal is green or if it's blue, it yeah. will, it will not react uh, the same way. And 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 sometimes also I guess there is projects which are uh, uh, like professional pro projects uh, where the materials are mandatory because you cannot invent the material or choose as yeah. you want it. Uh, yes. But when when you have the choice, uh, for example, like like this one where basically we say okay, do uh, do what you want almost. Um, do you sometimes adapt the material to? To, to get a better lighting condition, or do you stick with okay? Now for this one, I want this kind of leather, so I will uh, I will match the lighting so it, it really works with this kind of material. No, yes, I adapt it <laughs> when I when I can. Uh, it's um, sometimes it's easier to have uh, the result that you want to have. Like um, yes, I uh, that's why I did a lot of back and forth between Maya and Substance. It's uh, because sometimes. Um, maybe my, my leather was uh, realistic, but with my lighting, it was not looking realistic. So I, I just changed a bit the, the material to, to make it look better. 
Ok, awesome. Um, for concerning the the fabric version of the band, I think it was the most difficult uh, because I wanted to have uh, like a, a realistic fur on the material. Um, and I remember that it took me hours before achieving uh, something I was happy with. Um, trying um, many different substance materials. Um, and I always needed more details. So I needed more udims. And uh, finally, I, I found something I was happy with. And so I decided to add uh, the fur uh, using Maya because it was easier this way. Um, but I really want, yes, I, 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 did, I didn't find any solution to have like a result with a realistic fur only using textures. So I, I had to use uh, the fur simulation. Yeah, so far, I think there is, there is no choice, especially, especially with this kind of uh, really small uh, fibers, uh, yeah. which are almost vertical uh, and texture, it would be it can, it can be easily a mess, uh, definitely. but that, that, that's nice actually to see, uh, actually, uh, Emmanuel Flo Flores in the chat was a, is saying that the level of attention of, to all the micro details is what really makes the material shine. And it's true. It's, it's crazy. The, the attention to details, even for, from really close, something that we are not necessarily used to in video games, for example, where we know it, we won't do a close up uh, like it's really it's super rare and uh, but here it's it, it, it's quite impressive and that's perfect to show the materials actually <laughs> yes i love details uh, and uh, of many of my projects i i try to make a detail detailed shot and i think it's uh, yes it's important to uh, to uh, to make it looks uh, realistic yeah and offsite uh uh, not question, but I just uh, learned into the chat that you also did the compose the music of the video. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, nice. Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes because I, I, I always love music, uh, music, um, music production, and um, I think that that uh, three animation uh, was maybe a way for me to uh, to continue to make some music and some design. It works. <laughs> it's just awesome music, and uh, as we can see behind you, uh, you 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 like music and, uh, and playing oh, a yes. bit more the, uh, the guitar collection. Yes. And uh, just a notice also on the chat, Pascal Seifer is asking: Is Pierre Mayo is in the house? Yes, Pierre, Pierre Mayo is definitely in the house. Pierre Mayo is, is everywhere. Um. Uh, I, I so I, I will continue to talk about the screen. So I didn't show you the screen in um, in Substance Painter because it was not really interesting. Um, I I wanted at the beginning I wanted to use the OLED dashboard screen material, uh, which I found on Substance Source um, and which permit to directly add an image as input in Substance Painter, and. Um, but when I was working on the texturing, I didn't know what I wanted to display in the screen. So that's why I did it in post-production. As you can see, um, on the left, I, I just made a, a short animation of uh, a texture. And uh, on the right, I, I just imported and integrated the, this animation in the, in the, in the old watch animation. And so this is the final result. But still there is some substance, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, the, the texture has been done using substance. I mixed, uh, if I remember well, I mixed like two materials, a sand and a snow materials. And I just played with it and I had this result and I was, uh, I, I thought that it was, uh, yes, it was uh, what I was waiting for, so. Um, here is a global uh, materials overview. Um, so my work, my workflow is that I download them from a substance source, 
but I uh, never use materials like that. So I always have to refine it a bit to perfectly match with my uh, initial idea. Um, and sometimes I needed to, um, to manually, uh, man manually modify textures in Maya. So, um, for example, uh, here to, to add specific refraction, um, and you can see that on the, on the left, this is what I had on Substance, and on the right, this is what I did with the material in, in Maya. Um, so, uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. Uh, if you want more details about the process, uh, there is uh, the article I made on the, on the Substance magazine. There is many details um, about the process. Thanks uh, a lot, Jean-François. That, that was uh, ex extremely impressive and uh, refreshing as well. As, as I said first, we don't have that much uh, uh, product designer or uh, 3D designer like you, and we are definitely doing to do more uh, more of this to 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 reach um, new people, new industries, and see how substance is used in different contexts. Uh, we are going to do a really small um, uh, Q&A. So if you yeah. have questions, don't hesitate to add them to the chat. This is the, the right time. Um, uh, I actually have a, a first question. Um, yeah. So the first question is, did you create your own uh, HDR map? Um, I didn't use a HDR map. I don't think so. Yeah, the environment map. You so you are using the default one. Uh, oh, uh, in uh, you, um, if you are talking about uh, substance painter, yeah. Uh, both. Oh, because you are doing the lighting all by hand uh, with the. Uh, yes, in Maya. Uh, yes, yes, in Maya, it's all by hands. But it's in substance. Uh, no, I I just use the uh, the 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 HDI that already are in uh, in the the software. Okay. Nice. Nice. And, and sometimes uh, I, I make um, an IRA previsualization okay. just to, uh, yeah. to, to look um, if uh, if I'm right or yes. Yeah, that's actually a good. Uh, yeah, if you in case you didn't uh, try it, uh, just do. I think it's F10 on the on your on the on the on PC uh, to to launch IRA and you can have a like a, a ray traced uh, high quality ray traced rendering. So that's really good to have like a, a first previs of your model. Um, yes. That's really efficient. So let's see. We don't have that much question because we asked most of them during the chat, uh, the, the presentation. Um, someone is asking, what was the camera lens that was used for these shots? Mm -hmm. <laughs> which which one? Which? Uh, which? Yeah, then maybe. Uh, so that's a good question. I guess the you you may change depending of what you are. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, I, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't remember. I, I should go uh, into my files and yeah. look for this. <laughs> yeah. Just try, <laughs> people. And uh, for, for the fabric watch, I don't know if uh, from memory. Oh, yes, the one uh, you did from really close from the side, I guess. Um, oh, the, I, I don't remember. I don't That's, know. Uh, um, yeah, in case we, we can put it in the comments later on. You know, yes, 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 of course. When we, we have time. And I think I'm just looking on um, very inspiring from my texture module coming up uh, as I'll be using Substance. Um, and I think that's it. We have some bravo and uh, many things. Thank oh, you there so is, much. Oh, I see another question from Tucker Cool. Uh, you say that you like to work with reflections. What's your process for this? Do you start working with materials or lighting? Material okay. first or lighting? I think we answered the, the question during the chat. Yes. I won't Material give the first. minutes, but... Uh, <laughs> and you, you prefer to work with material first, then yes. lighting, right? Yes, but that's my workflow. I, I, I don't know if there is one good solution, but, uh, but yes, I prefer working with material yes, first. You, you, you Jean-François, are right, and they are all wrong. That's well, <laughs> no, but yeah, sure. I guess it depends. As we said, uh, when we were preparing this uh, live stream in uh, ArcVis, for example, they, 
There is many people who tend to do the contrary. They just place the elements, check the lighting because they have to refer to real light condition and sometimes the texture. But once again, it, it can depend uh, of, of every yes. art, artist. Jean-François, thanks a lot. It, it, it was great. Uh, nothing crashed. You, uh, oh, you yes, I'm sorry. It, it was a, <laughs> a, a, a bit of a fear at first, but honestly, we don't have that much, uh, that much uh, crash during a uh, live stream. So. That, that was also super interesting and a, a really refreshing appro approach for us because thank as I you. say, many artists... Thank you uh, so much. Yeah, th thank you it and was, I hope we'll do it, some it was a, Yes, it was a pleasure to work with the whole Substance team. I, I learned so many things during this project and so I would like to thank uh, every, every, all the old Substance team. Yeah, and thank you, and uh, thank you for everyone in the chat. Uh, thanks, uh, Marilyn and Casimir, and uh, if there were some people from Valenciennes, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, congrats to have such uh, great schools. Uh, see you for the next live stream, and uh, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.